Good morning, church. Welcome all to North Olmstead United Methodist Church. We are glad that you're here this morning to worship with one another in person. We also recognize and appreciate and celebrate our in-person and our live streaming recorded worshipers. So there are three entrance points, as we know, around in-person, live streaming, recorded, which is great in the gifts of worship ministry that God has given us. Welcome, everyone, on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost, which we celebrate the power, love, and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives on this October 9th, 2022. As we do come into this time of worship, I offer with you in call and response our welcome and greeting. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Many activities and missions and ministries here at North Olmstead United Methodist that speak to the vitality and the way that God is working in our midst. You'll see an announcement regarding our ongoing efforts in supporting the Connectional Church through UMCOR. We also have, which we'll hear a good announcement about from Claudia, who's putting to that together, Chair Yoga and Prayer. Our United Women in Faith remind you about our Church Mouse Craft Fair this Saturday, October 15th from 9 to 3 in Fellowship Hall, and they're in particular needs of baked items and also help at 3 o'clock. I believe that is the case, Barb, unless there's more that we need to offer, and they need help especially at 3 o'clock in cleanup and putting things back as we're familiar with. Continue to support our ox cart pantry. You'll see information there in regards to pantry and collections. Volunteers in the nursery. Our fall hike has been rescheduled to Sunday the 16th. A reminder about the Adult Fellowship Wine Tour, and I believe there's a sign-up sheet in Fellowship Hall at the table. And I was reminded by Wendy, our Director of Christian Ed and Youth Ministries, Family Ministries, that our trunk and treat is close to capacity or we will welcome over capacity we need at least three to five more vehicles uh, that would commit for trunk or treat as we offer this fun extension event for ourselves and to those that are searching for a church home reminder about the november agape newsletter deadline and activities regarding this week's calendar with small groups and meetings want to recognize also the insert it's not too late to be planning to honor memory and honor of loved ones that have passed on to eternal life, the church triumphant, as you would recognize those folks as we will celebrate and lift their lives on All Saints Sunday, November 6th. Claudia, I'm gonna ask that you would give a great announcement and encouragement for chair yoga, which I'm looking forward to participating in. Yeah, Pastor Hoyt was excited to do this for a while. Yes, so here very we are. Much so. Um, this is just going to be a demonstration, which means it's 15 to 20 minutes just to introduce you to what chair yoga might look like if we do some chair yoga here in the church. And I've been doing yo um, yoga for over 50 years, if you can imagine. I started as a young teenager, and I became a certified yoga instructor in 2016. So I'm really looking forward to you joining us. I just want to point out that it calms the mind renews your sense of well-being, helps put life in perspective, teaches how to go with the flow and the breath and movement, helps with stre stretching and strengthening and um, just general uh, flexibility in your spine and in your legs and everything you need to get going. It also helps with balance. We won't be doing this today because it is, it, is, it is chair yoga, but I, I hope you'll join us right after, well, maybe about five or ten minutes after the service, we have a circle set up in there. And I think that's it. I hope to see you. Great. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Now, related to chair yoga, and I hope you'll join Claudia and me and others. We will be living into scripture this morning around healing, and there'll be a message in response to healing. So one of the pieces of yoga, in my experience, is that it can be very healing. And, and in a way that's comfortable, and you can experience that independently with no pressure, and just calm, and we'll be glad that Claudia will be guiding us in our time, so thank you. I want to finally say, before we lean into worship, a uh, thank you to Ron and Ray and the trustees and, and Sarah and Craig and many others that have been beautifying the outside of our building in care of cleaning the shakes and staining those. If you've driven in and drove out, 
you'll notice how beautiful we have not only a great cosmetic upgrade, but functional upgrade with the shake. So Ron, thank you for leading that effort. And uh, it, it, it just really looks beautiful. Yeah. So thank you to Ron and the trustees in that regard. Now, as we come to this time together, I, I do want to uh, offer a moment of pastor privilege to Alice Walsh, our chair of staff parish relations. She has an announcement. Alice. Pastor Hoyt, you can stay right there. Oh, okay. I can't go hide? No. <laughs> you can't go hide. Oh, okay. um, as everyone in the congregation knows from our Agape newsletter and from the letter I sent out to you and to your homes, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And the second Sunday in October is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Mm. It's an opportunity for us to formally say thank you and how much we appreciate all that you do, that you serve us, care for us, and for our community. And that's very important. We want to just make sure we say thank you to you today. Um, in the Agape, I mentioned several ways that we can reach out to Pastor Hoyt um, in gratitude. One is to keep him and your family in our prayers. And we do that all during the year, but especially during October. And the second way is to talk to him about how his ministry has made an impact in your lives. You send him a note, pull him aside, maybe not on a Sunday, so you <laughs> don't clog up the line, but <laughs> find a time to tell him specifically how much he's, his ministry has meant to you. And the third way we can honor him is by honoring his day off. Um, the East Ohio Conference requires clergy, and I don't know if you knew this, they require clergy to have a day away. Right. And Pastor Hoyt has chosen Mondays for his day away, and so when we hold our calls and um, emails you know, to Tuesday, that's a way of honoring him. However, he did want me to let you know that he always has his cell phone if there's an emergency. The congregation has gathered and provided you a gift. Mm. Um, I have a small gift that's a book that I pray will reach you and touch you and um, inspire you. But we also collected funds that are in a card that are attached to this gift. And the congregation as a whole wanted you to know just how very much we appreciate you. I'll let you have that. Thank you very, very much. And you're always the one who prays for us. So I was wondering if we might pray for you today. Thank you so much. Are you okay? Thank you. Let's pray. Loving God, today we celebrate the ministry of Pastor Hoyt and give thanks to you for his calling to lead among us. We are grateful for the special gifts you have given him, his pastoral presence, his faith, and his ability to hold faith for us when our faith feels small, his courage and the strength it takes to share your word with us each week, his vision for our church and his humility in seeking it. Today we place our pastor and his family into your hands because we know your hands are good. May Pastor Hoyt and his family find rest and replenishment in you. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I've said this before, I'll say it again, that a lot, a lot of my life joy, uh, my sustenance, what gives me vitality is, is serving with all of you and walking with you as, as friends, as brothers and sisters in Christ. I love and feel honored to be your pastor. Uh, thank you for the honor today. I, I also want to recognize, embarrass her for a moment, my wife, Terry. Thank you for always your love, support, and always being there for me. So again, just a joy to serve and be in ministry with you. I know not every pastor is that fortunate and blessed. I am, and this is over the top uh, gifting, so thank you so much. Really appreciate it.
So now, as we come into a time of worship, let us center our hearts, our minds, and our spirits as we listen to the prelude. Good morning. Um, please excuse the little frog in my voice. Uh, we came home from our trip with a little extra souvenir, a tiny little virus called COVID. We're well on the men, but we didn't want to take any chances with our dear friends here. Please join me for the call to worship. Um, I'll read the regular print, and if you could please reply with the bold face print. Um, today's readings come all from the Psalms, and I love the Psalms because they give you such a variety. They have a Psalm for every occasion. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Come and see what God has done. God has turned our sea into dry land. We have passed through the river on foot. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of God's praise be heard. When you tested and tried us, O God, you brought us out to a spacious place. You kept us among the living and prevented our feet from slipping. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. How awesome are the deeds of our God. And sticking with the Psalms, the Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 111. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant, 
He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. His, he has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. And this ends the reading. Please join me in the unison prayer, again based on Psalm 66 with 2 Timothy, Timothy verse 2 as well. We give praise to you, O God, for you are awesome and amazing. We remember your deeds and faithfulness, deeds that have brought us to this day, faithfulness that has helped us weather life's storms. We have gone through fire and water and stand before you today in gratitude and praise. How awesome are your deeds, O oh God. Amen. Please join us in hymn 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. The words will be on the screen or they are in on page 89 in your pew by uh, hymnals.
one of the wonderful ways in which we share community and our faith is to be in a time of prayer, not only on Sunday mornings, but throughout the week. And we know those are great occasions through the week where we see one another and we hear and we listen with whatever we're going through. We offer that listening presence and prayer. We do that collectively this morning, pointing direction in particular to the prayer list, list of people, individuals, couples, and families recovering from surgeries, anticipating surgeries, recovering from illness, a variety of experiences in life. With those connected here or that we connect to an immediate extended family beyond the church, I encourage you to keep these folks in your prayers, not only this morning, but throughout the week. We do celebrate this week's birthdays with Nancy, with Michael and Dave. Happy birthday to this week's birthdays and others in October. Looking forward to one myself with my son on the 19th. I believe I've shared we're born on the same day, so that's kind of cool. We also recognize uh, in today's world there is so much that comes at us in, in, in challenge, in concern, in sorrow, in pain, but also in joy, in celebration, and triumph. And so some of that can seem overwhelming. So all the more reason that we come to God in prayer and we let go and we let go to God to minister in and through us, to remind us that we don't have to travel alone, that we have one another, we have God to guide us and direct us. And then as we share and we encourage with one another, one person at a time, we can make a difference with God and with Christ in our world. So let us come now to a time of prayer, first centering in a time of silence. Lord God, we thank you, and we are grateful. We are thankful and grateful that you have given us life to get up this morning to breathe, to walk, to drive here, to come into your place of worship, that in every moment that we have life and being, we give it all to you in thankfulness. Help us to never take for granted what you have given us and what you are giving us in these very moments. We thank you for the many ways in which you lift us, you strengthen us. You do that with us individually and with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord God, we know that in quiet, often we carry heavy burdens. We carry things that, that weight us in mind and body and spirit. And so we call on you to lighten our load, to help remove the weights of our lives, those things that tax us, to breathe in, to breathe out, to pray, to center with you. In your life-giving presence, creator God of the universe, lover of us all, for we are yours. We thank you that as we move through these times of worship and we anticipate then leaving and going out into the week, that we can know that you never leave us, that you always encourage us, and you direct us according to your will. Lord God, help us to not become overwhelmed by what we read and what we see in the news. Lord God, help us to sort out things that are fact and those that are not to be wise, but also to offer heart and compassion in a world that can be so divided and disunified and mean-spirited. Help us to be drawn to those that are unifiers, those that seek to be in holy conversation and civil dialogue, and that we could make a difference through elected officials in our world, that truly that they would represent you and love and care for your people. Gracious God, we know there are times in our life in which we feel disconnected, but you never let us go. We sin, but you are merciful and you forgive us for anything in which we feel that we have fallen and not been true to you. And so, Lord God, we call on your forgiveness. We call on your mercy, your redemption, 
as we pray together our prayer of confession in unison together. Oh God, we remember times of blessing in our lives when we have been released from suffering and despair, when we have been free to reclaim life and hope. But we also remember times of hardship, when we have been cast out into deep waters, when we have been banished in exile from the world we call home. O oh God, it is hard to claim the hope and promise of the past in the presence of today's troubles. Meet us today with your good news that we may be renewed by the power of your presence. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Give praise to God who accompanies us on our journey, who hears our cries in anguish, and who remains faithful and answers our prayers. Give glory to God who brings life out of death and joy out of sorrow. We pray all this as our Lord and Savior taught his disciples and teaches us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now enjoy our anthem, Earth and All Stars, by David N. Johnson, directed by Gabriella and accompanied by Marlene. Oh, 
Beautiful choir, thank you. Energy, joy with us this morning. Thank you for your music. And now as we celebrate all the things that God has blessed us with in our lives, we have an opportunity to give back to God through our gifts and our offerings. Would the ushers please come forward? God, we lift these gifts, we offer these gifts to you. We give them to you in joy and thankfulness and gratitude for all that you have done in blessing our lives. And so we pray that these gifts would be blessed for ministries of mercy, compassion, love, and grace, and hope for your people, for all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. We've been journeying with Luke the last several weeks, and we have this interesting passage as Jesus cleanses ten lepers. I hope you'll hear it in familiar ways, but also new ways as you are challenged by Jesus' teaching. Chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return? and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us now center with our next hymn, When Jesus the Healer Pass through Galilee. United Methodist Hymnal 263, verses 1, 3, 5, and through 7, and the words before you.
I believe, and I imagine you share this belief with me, that there is great mystery, great mystery and power in healing. And sometimes we experience for ourselves and others we know in life that people are not just healed, but cured. There is a difference. Cured, receiving something beyond themselves, working inward to eliminate certain ills, struggles, or problems, especially as we know through medical science, doctors, surgeons, and pills. God is working in the midst of it through the abundance of resources and gifted people to care for us. I know of people in my extended family and with friends in and beyond church life that have had disease, tonsils, adenoids, an appendix, or other organ removed, and then thanks to the goodness of God's gifts, working through and in modern medicine, were able to regain their health. These are stories that we are thankful for with God and we celebrate. And do we not also know of people who have survived COVID? If we look at the facts, through multiple approaches in proven science and dedicated care of medical teams. Thanks be to God. But we know that not everyone is cured in life. Some people are dealing with long COVID. Medical experts and scientists and researchers painstakingly, dedicatedly, are continuing to work with all the resources they can muster through God to provide ongoing help for people over the long haul. We persevere through God and support love and care for one another in the midst of the mysteries of healing and cure and illness and all of it. We are mortal and not all medical interventions Surgeries and medicines work to keep people alive. So for all of us, we need to admit that things happen or will happen to our bodies that we are not able to fix. Healing does not always mean a cure. I know of people such as myself who suffer from an increase daily and weekly, monthly of this growing problem and suffering of arthritis. I can feel it in my hands. I can feel it in my joints when I wake in the morning. And I know it's genetic as my oldest sister, my second oldest sister, and now my younger brother start sharing stories. We gain support from one another. We're not alone in that journey, but thankful in different ways as we are wired and with our genetics and how we're cared for, we are thankful for medicine the encouragement for movement, to keep exercising, keep moving, to gain strength, was something that can't be cured, but we can receive the gifts of alleviating the suffering. Holistically, in body, mind, and spirit, and things working together, we can pursue with this nagging thing of arthritis. Not cured, but we are able to manage it. I know of people who have benefited from God's gifts of pharmacology in the treatment of mental illness. Thanks be to God for alleviating the suffering. Not cured, but on a path towards healing and able to manage and cope with it in life. And while healing does not always mean a cure, the good news, I believe, in our faith as Christians is this. Every day, we remind one another of this, is a gift that God has given us to live and to share. Regardless of our individual, our collective suffering, what we have empathy and support for, and what we're enduring physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, can also, if we pay attention, be met with joys for ourselves and others. And we learn through it all, do we not, if we speak it out loud or not, that we are reminded in our faith as Christians that our deaths 
will not be the end of the story. As we pass on an unbroken line from this life, we have the promise. We have the promise of eternal life with God. For that, we can be ever thankful. And so it is so important for us then to take an even closer look at healing and faith and how they intersect and work together. Healing through faith, I believe, is to experience a lifelong process of becoming healthier if we commit to that and we discipline ourselves to that with our entire being, body, mind, and spirit through the use of inner resources in prayer and centering and silence, relying on God's presence and receiving, again, support and empathy from others as we share or choose to trust to do that with whatever ills that we're experiencing, to hear someone say in so many words, you are not alone, and I understand, and I'm with you. And we pray together with the same God who is with us ever present and offering this lifelong process of healing which in Hebrew is shalem. Shalem, working toward a process of wholeness and eventually experiencing shalom, or at least glimpses of it in reality in this lifetime, leaning to then the extension of shalom known in our ultimate healing in eternal life. That's hopeful news. That's promising news. When we are struggling with different illnesses and struggles and desire healing. I believe that it's also important, though, to note that miracles of being healed and cured do sometimes intersect and work together, praise God, in ways that are simply beyond what we are able to comprehend or understand. Perhaps you've had the experience where you knew someone was given a horrible prognosis, maybe even for yourself, and the doctors have said, we, we've done everything we possibly can. And then you hear days, weeks later, in the imaging work, by example, it's gone. There is no more cancer. We don't understand and we don't comprehend. We can't rely on these things, but we can hope for them, we can pray for them, and allow God to do the work among us, and praise God when that happens. Again, it's not something we can figure out, or comprehend, or understand or predict, but we are thankful when it happens. The United Methodist Church offers, I believe, a great statement in this regard, taken from the United Methodist Book of Worship. And I quote, healing is not magic, but underlying it is the great mystery of God's love. No one can predict what will happen in a given instance. Many marvelous healings have taken place, end quote. And so with that in mind, let's take a closer look at today's scripture in that intersection of healing and curing and what in a marvelous way happened with Jesus and the lepers who desire to be made clean, to be cured. Ten of them, ten lepers, yes, but I imagine that it's possible that only one of them from what we understand at face value with the scripture, was truly healed. How so? Why would I make that claim? It has to, if we peel this back further in scripture, it has to do with being faithful and thankful through the whole healing experience. And so we learn that Jesus finds himself in this in-between region of Samaria and Galilee and Jerusalem. And sometimes there was fighting verbally, physically, unfortunately, of the Sumerians and the Jews of Jerusalem who didn't agree on the formation of temple and worship and Torah and got so wrapped up in their differences, even though they named and claimed, as scholars can tell, the same monotheistic loving God, they often were combating with one another through centuries. And so it's in this in-between zone that Jesus was often trying to find comedy and unity and in the actions of healing through God by examples of God the Father what brings us together and so we enter a village or Jesus does and these ten lepers approach him and they call out have mercy on us 
And when he sees them, he says, go and show yourselves to the priest. Already the healing, curing experience is occurring. And then legally, as they would go to the priest, there was a document for lepers who had been healed or cured where they get a certificate that they could show and prove to people that they had been healed or cured. And so we learned that this process happens as they went to the priest. They were made clean. They were cured. But then the shift in the passage, which is so important, that one of them, that Samaritan, he doesn't just move on hurriedly with his life. He takes the time to turn back, praising God with a loud voice. He humbly in humility and honor and praise prostrates himself at Jesus' feet and thanks him. And it's pointed out in Scripture, and again, he was a Samaritan. Not likely, although we don't know, these God-fearing Jews who went back on their way to Jerusalem. Then Jesus asked, in conversation with that Samaritan who had taken the time to return and be in relationship with Jesus, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise and thanks and gratitude to God our Father? Through me, through this experience, other than you, you who are considered a foreigner, then he said to them, in heart, compassion, and wisdom, go, get up, get up, and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. It's a great statement. It's a great healing message from Jesus one that can be somewhat complicated until we really discern and try to discern prayerfully what's going on here. Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. What I believe made the Samaritan well was the fullness in his action to turn back in faith and to give honor and praise to God and Jesus for being healed and cleansed of leprosy. The Samaritan received the gift of salvation. The grace, love, and power of a living relationship with God and Jesus Christ. It was a powerful intersection of healing and our cure. But I imagine he didn't just sit on it and just forget it and say, oh, that was kind of nice. We have to get a sense of the scripture and what happens in action later in Luke with these folks who were healed and cured and found glory, salvation, sanctification through Jesus and God. The man, in his thankfulness, and being called to go forth, goes trustingly and lovingly through the power and love of God and Jesus for the rest of his life. He is centered, he is focused, he is empowered, not just by the physical healing. And again, we don't know the rest of the story, but hopefully he was then a witness to others to be faithful, to be thankful to God and Jesus. We don't know, do we, if the other nine, maybe Jews from Jerusalem, who were healed, who were cleansed, returned to Jesus to thank him. Ideally, I would hope that they did, and in their own time, they found Jesus and said, you know, by the way, I forgot, and I appreciate, and I honor and praise the most incredible experience in my life that you were with me and you were able to do this, but we don't know if they did. Maybe they simply forgot and moved hurriedly, on with the rest of their lives, which would be so easy to do. Almost implicitly, not consciously, an act of thanklessness, a lack of appreciation in the glory and experience of all of this. And so a story from my childhood reminds me of the importance of being intentionally thankful with many of the intersections that God and Christ have in our lives, let alone with healing. At a very young age, on more than one occasion, I can see their faces. I remember a teacher or adult asking this question directed to me or another child. Have you forgotten something? They asked the question when we forgot to say thank you. Thank you after receiving a gift or act of love and kindness from someone. There's power in the word and action of thankfulness and offering the words. I remember as a child, as I leaned into that, sometimes I didn't always 
remember to do it. In adulthood, I still forget. But when I have, it's often led to and still leads to a closer relationship within the other person. You can see it when you offer genuinely the word of thanks in the intersection of a God moment, a conversation, a listening ear, wanting and needing the healing presence of God through someone. You can see it on their face when you say thank you. Almost a mutual sense of gratitude in the experience. For saying thank you to God for what we have received and are receiving in those experiences is empowering and does lead to more deep, meaningful relationships with one another as children of God. And I believe when we do that, in many ways, at least indirectly, it's healing. Especially, especially for me anyway, I don't know about you, when I have forgotten to thank God who makes our lives possible and all those moments possible. I am healed when I have the experiences of thank you with one another. Are you remembering to say thank you? Thank you to God for loving you and gifting you with life. Are you thankful to God for the ways that God is working in your life and the lives of others? Are you thankful for the ways that God has provided healing experiences for, with, and through you? Again, I am mindful of the fact that sometimes I forget to say thank you. To simply quiet, or if I'm driving or away from the situation after thanking the person, I say, thank you, God, quietly or out loud. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus says, when we come to him for healing and respond in thankfulness and gratitude, our faith makes us well in a fuller sense, not just the physical pieces, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the interpersonal, the walk in faith. We are made well in the journey and living the gift of salvation in the here and now and in the glimpse of the life to come. In closing, I want to share this important part of my life. Over the last several years, perhaps you have a friend like this in your life or you're pursuing that kind of friend. I've had the special experience of developing, again over decades, a very special, trusting relationship with a dear friend and colleague whose name is John, a retired elder of the United Methodist Church who has lived well into his late 80s. He has lived through transformation experience. If you saw John 20, 30 years ago and saw him in the way he lived as a district superintendent and how he worked as chair of council and finance administration, it was all about business. It was all about the business of the church and he was responsible, it was go, 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 and he looks back and he sees the times in which he, meant, he missed God's presence to stop to pace, to not be so hurried. In the best health for himself and for others to have more genuine intersections and relationships. He often got ahead of himself and stood through prayer and reading and centering and small group formation and enriching his life with literature and Bible study and Christianity and small groups and the intersections of other religions and mindfulness and understanding the part that this guy deeply transformed by God, made a difference in my life in living the story of healing. He broke through to the other side and discovered what God is truly intending him to live. It's never too late. Over the years, we have claimed that we are somewhat, if you will, soulmates, for we have shared much and we identify so deeply with one another in the best and worst of life in times of faithfulness and faithlessness and being playful and being serious, viewing things lightly and reflecting on things very deeply, all to say that when we come away from it, we mention and say to one another how healing that was, how supportive and encouraging, loving and caring, and we understand more acutely, keenly, that God and Christ were truly in our midst. We have shared times of brokenness and suffering, 
healing and joy and everything else imaginable. He will always be a very close friend, a brother in Christ. Do you have that friend? You never take them for granted. Are you seeking those kinds of friends so that you might continue on a path of wholeness, on a path of healing? While my friend is aging and declining with his physical health rapidly, now in his late 80s, he has learned to do it He fights it sometimes, so do I. He has learned to do it gracefully and thankfully, to let go and to just be in the moment. How does he do it? He keeps his faith in God and Jesus who never waver, who never leave him, who give him breath, who give him life, and never stop giving him opportunities as long as he is breathing and sharing opportunities to learn, relearn, and in part, his wisdom. Oh, he's a wise person and love with others. I learned so much in his modeling, in his humbleness and humility, and learning previous parts of his life that were unhealed and, and, and much part to his own doing or lack of doing, and then to let go and to let God to be healing. He knows that he will not be cured. He will not be cured with his failing heart and lungs. But he knows that he is experiencing healing now. As he gains each day a closer glimpse, a closer glimpse of his ultimate healing when he will transition to eternal life. You see, his faith is making him well. That is what gives him strength each day, and so he remembers to be thankful to God and to encourage me and others to do the same. It was the way of the Samaritan with God and Jesus. It is the way for you and me to strive for each day. Remember to be thankful. It's a healing experience. Amen. Let us now stand and join together with our closing hymn, Give Thanks, from the faith we sing, number 2036, and the words before you.
Please join me now in our responsive benediction. Jesus said to the leper, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Let us claim Jesus' healing and live in our lives. Get up and go on your way. In Jesus' name, your faith has made you whole. And all God's people say, Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the post-lit.